Hi, I'm Tim Cashel with the Evolve Academy, and today I'm here with Vincent Ayala from Barco. And one of the things we're going to cover in this video is relative presets. So Vince, when we teach the classes, a lot of times we're getting questions about relative presets. What are they? What are the times to use them? So can you give us a little brief explanation of the difference between complete presets, relative presets? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, uh, we kind of always done thing in a, uh, done things in a complete uh, preset way where we, you know, com a complete preset captures every destination, its status, whether it's selected or not, and then if it is selected, all of the elements inside of it. So snapshot of backgrounds, any layers, whatever sources you have up on that exactly. destination at the time. Yeah, and it's it's almost like a, a comprehensive snapshot. I mean, it gets everything, you know, okay. including... So relative? Relative is a little bit more uh, focused. So instead of it being everything, it only it will only select uh, the destinations that are selected, excuse me, it'll only record the destinations that are selected and the elements in which you ask it to record. So okay. for instance, actually, let me I'm gonna walk you through a couple of uh, yeah. a couple so of examples of that. We're gonna- Talk is cheap, so let's go ahead and go right to the demo. Cool, and in, <laughs> in, in fact, um, you know, we're actually going to do all relative presets. We're not gonna do any complete presets, so there's no contrast. No complete presets, yeah. all relative. All right. So, um, let's start with a good foundation, a good foundation being like a, a nice background. So we've preloaded a couple of backgrounds in. So I'll go into my native background tab, I'll go into my background stills and I'll pull, say, my lake. Uh, so I have my lake set up. Okay. I'll smooth over to my preset tab. I'll make sure that my relative radio button is selected. Okay. And then I'll go to my layers. Now this is where I, in the layers tab, is where I select the layers or the backgrounds in which I'd wish to uh, show or hide to the record of the relative preset. So you're showing or hiding which layers are going to be included in the relative yes. preset. Okay. Written into that preset. That's exactly right. Okay. So uh, basically what I want to do is hide everything. So except... blue, blue means hidden. Yeah. Okay. And then I want to hide everything except for the background, which is white. Okay. So that means it's uh, it's visible, it's visible to, the, okay. to the record of the relative preset. That's right. So then I'll simply go to my preset tab and hit save from preview. And I'll call this one my lake VG. And you'll notice as I as I recorded that one, there you get that nice little R indicating okay. that it is a relative preset okay. as opposed to a complete preset. Well. So um, let's do a second one. So we'll do the beach. Drop the beach in here, make sure our relative preset radio button is selected. We'll go to our layers, make sure that our layer, our background layer is visible and not hidden. And then we'll go back to our preset tab and we'll hit save from preview. And we'll call this one beach background. So as you're writing these relative presets, you don't have to keep selecting or unselecting visible or Vis visible or hidden layers because it just remembers your last settings. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. And that's actually a feature for uh, 7.0. That's one of the new features in 7.0. Is it kind of remembers what you've been doing and it'll it'll keep emulate. The state. Yeah, it'll keep the state of, of what you were doing. Same as if you were to recall them, it would it would recall that state, which I'll show you later. Okay. So uh, let's recall these. So if I recall the lake, if I recall the beach. You know, there's nothing new here, right? This is kind of, this is very similar to the way a uh, complete preset operates, except right. it's really only focused to that background layer. So, so what if you put a couple layers on top of this? Glad you asked. So actually, I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send that to program. Okay. So we can see that live on program. And let's take some layers and let's drop them in. Now, full disclosure, I made some user keys to speed this process up a little bit. Which all of you should do. <laughs> So I'm going to drop in two layers and use my user keys for my size and positions here. And I'll just go ahead and go back to my preset tab and create a preset. This has, say, graphics one and graphics two, or sorry, graphics one and graphics one on layer one and layer two. Okay, so basically two layers that we want to have the main graphics machine sitting on. Yes, exactly, okay. exactly. So I'll go back to my layer tab here and I will hide everything except layer one and layer two. Okay. See how I did that? Now, the preset that I create will only focus, will only show or write layer one and layer two's size, position, and source. Okay. So let me go ahead and go to the preset, and we'll hit save from preview. And I'll call this one GRFX1. Okay. 
Africa. So now, theoretically, if we were to drop the backup machine, Graphics 2, into these two locations and write a relative preset for just that. Making sure that my all your layers, layers are, are still exactly. hidden or visible, depending exactly. on what you want. So we'll go to my preset and we'll save that one. And we'll call this GRFX2. So if I select Graphics 1 and recall it, mm -hmm. it will pull my Graphics 1. If I select Graphics 2, it will pull, my, pull up my Graphics 2. Okay, so let's take this into practice. Let's take Graphics 1 okay. and let's go ahead and send that to program. Gotcha. So now let's say we're running our show and all of a sudden Graphics 1 has an issue. Now we want to go to Graphics 2. Simple enough. I simply select Graphics 2 and I transition. But the real value comes in, say, if potentially the background machine died on us or and, and we wanted to change from uh, the lake to the beach right. without recalling, without creating a new preset or recalling a new preset, we could simply select the beach relative, not affecting anything that's happening on program. So let me stop you right there for one quick second. Okay. So I noticed that you did recall the beach background and all it did was change the background to the beach input. Exactly. Now, if this were a complete preset with the beach background, you would lose these two layers on top. It would recall just the background exactly. with the beach. Yeah. So the relative preset is doing what right now? Oh, it's actually doing, <laughs> good, good thanks for reminding me, it's actually doing what we call a match program. So it matches the two layers that are on program into your preview. And because it was the only thing that was uh, actually um, cooked into the preset, to the relative preset, or I'm sorry, the only thing that was shown visible on the relative preset, uh, that's the only thing that's going to change. Right? So again, layers go into a match program scenario, and the preset is the only, or the uh, background's the only thing that changes because that was. I think that's where we get a lot of confusion in the classes because when people see a relative preset, and then let's say it's for a layer, they recall it. They're expecting to see just that layer show up in preview and mm -hmm. then just take that to program. But what they see is the entire program plus their plus preset. Their and yeah. that's what's happening is ma uh, match programs happening mm -hmm. because the, the E2 structure is a full preview look ahead system. Exactly. It's, it's an architecture that's built into the architecture. It is. And yeah. it's not like other manufacturers' right. boxes. Right. It's not a compounding relative preset. Correct. It's actually a match program and replace. So. I actually have a, a cool example of how that that comp, uh, the um, match program works. If you want me to yeah, walk through that, yeah, run us through it. Super. Um, so uh, let's say, for instance, we have this beautiful preset right here. This graphics two. We have it live on screen, and we want to float in a clock or something like that. Maybe float in a clock, float out a clock. Okay. So we would. It's it's really simple to do those. We just uh, drag the clock in. I'm going to center it out just a little bit here, make it look nice and pretty. Drop my clock in there. And what I'll do is I'll go to my relative preset to, uh, radio button. Then I'll go to my layers. I will hide everything except for layer three. Layer three, exactly. Right. And I'll go to my preset tab again, making sure my relative radio button is selected. And I'll hit save from preview. And we'll call this one clock in. Now, if I want to create the clock out, I actually have to create a preset that takes the clock out. Right. So to do that, I'm actually going to do that real quick. To do that, what we would do is select the layer, hit the clear, and now just because it's cleared and it's not in preview doesn't mean that we're not, it's not visible to the record. Correct. Right? So keep in mind that it's off of preview and it's off of program, but it's still being written. So this means it's still visible, the state of that layer is still visible to the relative preset recording. Correct, yeah. exactly. So what I'll do is I'll go to my preset tab and I'll hit save from preview and I'll call this one clock out. All right, so at this point we have created basically three different kind of looks I would say. We mm -hmm. have uh, our two backgrounds and we have a primary, a primary and a backup solution for our graphics machine and then we have a clock in clock out. So if we were to do this with complete presets it would be approximately 9 to 18 individual presets right. to get any one of those combinations. Because you'd have to do the background with these two with exactly. graphics one, yep. the background with graphics two yep. plus the clock, plus the clock, different background same pips, yes. it, it starts stacking up quite quickly yes. as far as complete presets. Exactly. So now all we've done is we've created essentially six presets 
that can achieve any combination of that as we as we see fit. Mm -hmm. Just keeping in mind that it does that match program. Right. So let's take a look at this. Um, let's say we wanted to go with the lake background and we'll transition it. We'll do graphics one. We'll transition it and we'll float the clock in. So we can float the clock in. And let's say we wanted to remove the clock. We'll recall the clock out and there it is. So if someone did want to go to a all background or a background only transition, that would still be a complete preset that they would write for just background only. Yes, exactly. So. Or they could recall whichever relative and then manually clear out what right. they didn't want to have. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but, but the kind of safest way to do that is to create those complete presets. Like if I were to do this in a real life situation, I would, I would have like very, very basic complete presets and then I would have relatives that accent my complete presets. Yeah, so complete presets would be like a logo, all logo or yeah. all black or all tape roll or video roll, whatever it might be. Exactly. Okay. And then I would have my little, you know, my little clock float in and float out with my relative or maybe a logo float in, float out. So this would be a really good one for like keys. Yes. If you had like logos or something you want to key in, then key off. Yep. But you want to have it available for every look, not just certain looks. Exactly. You can have a relative preset that brings your keyer in and out. Really increases the flexibility of the system. Okay, great. So one of the things I've noticed in the current software versions is that if you are recalling or looking at relative presets, the layers tab doesn't show you what layers were hidden or visible mm. when you wrote that preset. Yeah. Is that going to change? That is actually with version 7.0, which we're operating on now. Surprise. <laughs> uh, with 7.0, we kind of, we, we don't kind of, we recall the last state that was recorded. So let's take, let's take a look. For instance, if I recall clock in and I take a look at my layers, you'll see that layer three is the only one yeah. that is visible. But if I go back to my presets and say, uh, recall my beach background and I go to my layers, you'll see that my background is the only one that's visible and all the other ones are hidden. Ah, so this is nice now. So if I wanted to create a new relative preset based on whatever was visible or hidden on that preset, I could recall it, yep. make changes and resave it. I wouldn't have to go back and unselect and reselect exactly. the layer tab. Yeah, saving the user just mounds and mounds of time if they're really invested into relative presets, which right. we hope they will be now. <laughs> right, so especially if you have a lot of main and backup scenarios, mm -hmm. main and backup playback, main and backup computers, Yep. all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Okay, that's great. So version seven? Version seven, coming soon. Coming soon. <laughs> coming soon. But it's still, you know, the, the, the thought process is still applicable to all the previous versions uh, that included relative presets. It's just not as, not quite as fine tuned as it is now. Right. Um, but the, you know, again, the thought process is still there. Okay. So hopefully you've got a better idea of what relative presets are used for and how to use them and how to apply them to your programming. And I'm Tim Cashel, and this is Vince Isle with Barco, and thank, thank you, you for watching. Much. Thanks.